This exact terrarium has gained hundreds of millions of views on social media and has totally transformed the face of my business. Today, I'm going to show you exactly how to make one. It may look like a regular terrarium, but inside are hundreds of creatures that contribute to the ecosystem. When choosing bugs for your terrariums, it's important that you don't go outside and take them from the wild because a terrarium is a tropical environment and many temperate species aren't suitable. I like to use a company called Micro Exotics who are based in the UK and they specialise in providing creatures for your terrariums. Here's what I'm using today. Garlic snails, Arctochilus alliarius, isopods, Armadillodium gastroi and Trichorina tormentosa, millipedes, pink dragon millipedes and bumblebee millipedes, springtails, bilabella brawnerae. These creatures will feed on decaying matter, turning it back into fertilizer for the plants when they go to the toilet. Here's what I'm using to make the terrarium. Substrate. Rather than go into depth as it's a big topic, I have a dedicated substrate video on my channel that you can check out. I'm also adding a healthy amount of leaf litter as this helps replicate the forest floor where these creatures live in nature. Cork bark centerpiece which provides lots of hiding places and a surface for the creeping plants to climb on. A container with a lid. I've chosen this large 40cm fish bowl but you can go smaller if you like. Worm castings. I top dress with this after the plants go in for an additional nutrient boost. Drainage. I'm using lecker here because it's light and adds no weight to the terrarium. Plants. It's important to choose species the bugs won't eat so here's what I've gone for. Pileoglorca, Nephrolepis cordifolia duffii and Nephrolepis exaltata. Biophytum sensitivum, a mini palm-like plant, Selaginella and Sinita, and Ficus thunbergii and Ficus columbia cuttings. They've worked well for me in the past, so I'll use them again. Ficus bleed a milky latex when cut, which can be irritable, and I'm guessing that's why the bugs won't touch them. Mosses, some tropical hypnum and Java moss. Temperate mosses tend not to last very long in terrariums like this, which is why I've chosen the tropical species. Here's how I assemble the terrarium. First, I go in with a decent layer of lecker. Not only does this act as a drainage zone, but it creates an air pocket at the bottom of the terrarium which keeps things nice and aerobic. The creatures often hang out in this part of the terrarium. Next is the all-important substrate that sits on top of the drainage layer. I don't add a screen between this and the drainage layer, but you can if you like. But whatever happens, don't skimp on the substrate. Adding a cork bark centerpiece is multifunctional. The crevices provide lots of hiding places for the bugs and it also allows creeping plants to root into it. It's naturally rot and mold resistant and will take a long time to degrade in the terrarium. On top of this, it also looks super cool. I'm a massive fan of cork bark. Here's the fun part, the plants. Usually it's best to add the taller plants at the back and the smaller ones at the front, but it's also nice to mix that up sometimes. I mentioned that I want the ficus to climb on the cork bark, so I'm placing some cuttings around the base. In time, they'll find their way up and over the bark. A quick note on cuttings. I love using them where I can because it means the plants acclimatise directly into the terrarium. It also means that they stay smaller for longer while a root system is established. It's not always possible to use cuttings in this way, but I recommend it if you can. Mosses should always occupy the prime real estate of the terrarium, and that's normally right at the front. I don't know about you, but my favourite aspect of terrarium building is the ability to grow moss, and I feel that it should be shown off at every given opportunity.
leaf litter and worm castings. Now mulching in the garden is a highly beneficial practice and it's no different in a terrarium. There are many materials that you can use as a top dressing, but today I'm using worm castings. As water passes through them, it will take nutrients down into the substrate with it. This will keep the plants fed, happy and healthy. Worm castings also have the added benefit of containing lots of beneficial microorganisms that will further benefit the terrarium. Leaf litter is something I'm using more and more of. It's a no-brainer and provides so much value to our micro world. If you've ever made compost, then getting the balance right between both carbon and nitrogen is vital, and the leaf litter provides a great source of carbon. As it breaks down, it adds body to the substrate. The creatures in the terrarium usually live on the forest floor, and the leaf litter creates an environment that's close to that. It breaks down slowly and provides a slow-release food source for our multi-legged friends. So that is how you make a bioactive terrarium and I honestly think that this is the best one that I've made so far. If you'd like to continue the discussion then you can join my Discord or Facebook group, both links are in the description below. And as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.